Hi, it's Terry Sweeney with Black Hat. I'm talking today with Josh Douglas, Vice President of Threat Intelligence for Mimecast. Josh, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Terry. I'm excited to be here. Security professionals rely so much on threat intelligence and traditional indicators of compromise to keep users and data safe. Why don't we start by talking about some of the limitations and, and challenges there, especially for lean IT organizations? Yeah, I think inherently, you know, when we think about uh, threat intelligence, we think about indicators of compromise, which really is post-breach threat intelligence, meaning okay. either you have to be compromised or in the process of being compromised. It doesn't really put the lean IT ahead of the curve, number one. Uh, number two, uh, it also exhibits more noise, which I think is the harder and larger problem for lean IT, because they're having to spend time go th going through that data, analyzing it, and responding to it. Uh, and, and in most times, what you'll find is that a majority of that data isn't relevant to them, or it could even be, um, you know, benign for them to be able to act Okay, on interesting. All right. It, it sounds like resources then are a bit of a challenge, um, which is true for most organizations, whether it's additional staff or, or buying technology, bigger capital budgets, all to defend and protect. Shouldn't more money and bigger capital budgets solve this issue? I wish, but I mean, it, if you look at the community today, people are talking about resource constraints and not, you know, it doesn't even, it goes outside the aspects of hiring, it, you know, because even if I have all the money in the world, I may not be able to fix the, the broader problem, which means I need to have to uh, have a different lens on it. So, um, you know, I could put tens of thousands of people on this problem tomorrow. We may solve it, but ultimately the ITs don't have that kind of funding in the first place. Otherwise, they'd have a big team. Sure. Okay. Um, nonetheless, uh, the, the trend is that malware volumes and the numbers of daily attacks continue to increase just unrelentingly. Um, what are smart organizations doing to address this? Well, they're typically finding a service provider that is already consuming all those indicators of compromise, so that way they don't have to. Okay. Um, the second piece is that they're forming more of a, a holistic strategy on you know, tightening up their belt and doing some of the tactical items that they need to do first. Um, but ones that are a little bit more strategic in nature are also starting to understand what's their risk compared to their peers, and also the difference between inside and outside threat intelligence. Okay. But still focusing on intrusions and potential malware has its own limitations. If, if customers try to get more of a, a I guess, a meta view, really, um, what sorts of things should they be looking at or adding to the mix? Yeah, so uh, back in my past life when I used to be a CISO, you know, what I reported to the board was four things, and you know, we can think about it more broadly than this even today, but, you know, it really was compliance, the things that I have to do. Okay. Uh, the commitment, the commitment I needed from the company, complexity, the things I can't control, such as breaches, attacks, et cetera. And then really the fourth thing is culture. So, um, you know, smart companies are starting to think about the fact that culture pl plays a large part in this across the board which means they need to look at their entire community. Okay. You've, you've spoken about a strategy that encourages customers to operationalize their IT investment. What does that look like from a practical and a strategic level? Yeah, so the practical means doing the, the normal things that you would expect, good hygiene. So, mm -hmm. you know, do I have patching in place? Have I turned my tools on in the right way? Am I using those security features? Have I communicated to my customers? And you know, those sort of things that they need to know about around security. Strategic, though, they're really going back to the root of the problem. So if I think about a malware attack, the root of the problem may not necessarily be that, you know, I don't have all the greatest detection mechanisms, because I may. Um, because even if we look at phishing attacks today, some phishing attacks get through the door without any sort of malware, and they go sure. solely on the social aspects of, of human anatomy which means that I need to extend out the broader aspects of security to, to, to the entire community, meaning I need to make sure they have good awareness training, et cetera. I may even make sure that they're understanding those complexities, that such as you know, if they put their username and password from work inside of a, a personal account, be it you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera, um, that that could come back directly and harm, sure. harm sure, the company. Sure. Okay. You, you mentioned culture a, a few minutes ago. Um, as every InfoSec professional knows, it is notoriously hard to change, um, but yet it's obviously an essential part of uh, improving an 
organization's overall uh, IT and security posture. What sorts of cultural shifts and uh, training are important to initiate and encourage here? Yeah, so I think there's uh, two ways we can look at this, you know, and, and one's a, a strategy that you go after based upon what you're trying to get out of, the, out of it. And then one is the, the tactical item in which you, you approach. So tactical item, let's talk about that first. A lot of times we try to use a stick to beat people into submission <laughs> around security. And then, and then when, when we really should be using the carrot. Um, and, and by that, I mean, you, you need to engage people in a proper way. And, and that gets into the strategic conversation. So in Mimecast, we, we think about, you know, that engagement and culture around three things. It's engagement, it's, it's, um, it's knowledge, and it's sentiment. And, okay. And so really, fundamentally, awareness training today has kind of fallen down because people don't want to be engaged in it. And, and often security professionals, if we're using the stick, we're also not engaging the users either. So we need to find a good way, be it through humor or some other aspect, to get the employees engaged. So once they're engaged, that typically the knowledge will start to increase. And when the knowledge increases, the sentiment will increase, which ultimately reduces human error. Um, and this is something that, you know, we've taken through the, through the masses of, of our customers that are using it, and it absolutely works. And that's why the employees get more engaged. They start to become an extension of the security team. It's an exciting mechanism to start to change the, the, the dynamic around culture. Okay. Uh that's, that's, that's really interesting. It also seems to map into uh, another shift in strategy that you've advocated around, um, which asks security teams to try and discern the, the intent of intruders. Um, how does that work exactly, and how does it shift the conversation around security strategy? Yeah, as security professionals, we often are very focused on security, security, security. We don't sure. think about the business aspects that are at hand. So we, we don't, number one, put ourselves in the shoes of the people that we're working with, let alone put ourselves in the shoe of the adversary that's going after the people that, that we're working with mm, for business. Right. So, um, you know, we often focus more on attribution when we think about, uh, you know, threats. And for most companies, that's not going to get them anywhere. They can't indict those individuals. They're not going to be able to go in and perform some action against them to stop it. But what they can do is reduce the likelihood that they get targeted by understanding what they're after. So if I'm a you know, uh, manufacturer, and I and I do some sort of widget for a utility company. More than likely, I'm involved in that chain, which means it's broader than me. It means thinking about the aspect of who's the downstream recipient of this attack. It could be the power company. And so, when you start to think about that, you can form a strategy on what are the most important data elements in my company. How do I how do I retain that? How do, how do I have business continuity should something go awry? So that way the fundamental piece that I'm providing does not impact not only me, but it also does not impact my customer. Okay. It sounds like you want customers to better understand what their risk is for attack and also what makes them attractive as a target. What Once they've got a better handle on, on, on those issues, what do they do then? So they can form that roadmap, a strategic plan, to be able to start to close some of those gaps because everything isn't going to change tomorrow. I mean, any security professional that's gotten in the door day one can tell you that like operationalizing security doesn't happen instantaneously. Granted, if you have a partner that can provide some sort of you know platform, you know, such as Mimecast does today, you know, some of that gets shortened. You know, the tactical items around threat intelligence and you know being able to stop malware they happen much quicker. So that way, you can start to focus on the more important things inside your company walls. You know. Should I train the individuals to be more aware of these security problems? You know, should I actually go after, uh, you know, putting patches on these systems inside my environment because they're considered a high value target to an adversary? Um, you know, should I have a, a particular engagement model or even join an ISAC relative to, uh, you know, the power industry or, you know, utilities, whatever it may be. But thinking more broadly, now I have a roadmap that I can go after and I start to close the gap. And what you'll see happen and I, having seen this firsthand is, is that when you close that gap against the adversary, the attacks will go down and they'll, they'll shift their focus onto a softer target. And, and ultimately, that's, that's the goal you need to go after is how you make it harder for them to come after you. This is great stuff, Josh, giving us a, a, an awful lot to think about here today. Thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you, Terry. I've enjoyed it. We've been talking with Josh Douglas, Vice President of Threat Intelligence with Mimecast. I'm Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. We'll see you next time. Music